Well, it's that time of year again. Winter's coming. Cars are going away for storage. Um, this and the Saab 9.3 convertible are going to be put away for storage until spring. Starting, well, once I get this back home, uh, it will no longer be driven until spring. Salt has unfortunately already hit the hit the roads. Um, it came a bit sooner than I expected, so got to do a salt neutralizer on this once I get back. Um, luckily, it hasn't driven in any really wet road spray. It's just been dry salt powder and residue being flung up by the tires. So um, this does have aftermarket undercoating on it that's held up pretty well in most places so that's good um, especially in the rockers and uh, wheel wells and all that you can see it has not started bubbling or peeling or trapping water so um, I don't like the stuff the rubber stuff personally I prefer uh, um, crown rust proofing or fluid film but anyway no, this is my 1990 Ford Probe GT with the Mazda 2.2 liter turbocharged uh, with an intercooler. This was the same car as the uh, Mazda MX-6 of the time, but Ford partnered and, well, Ford basically owned a percentage of Mazda, I think, and uh, this is their Ford's flair, or treatment of the MX-6, which I think they did a better job than Mazda's styling. I mean, I like the Mazda MX-6s, but compared to this, um, the Mazda looks pretty boring, which is fine. I mean, that's kind of Mazda of that era anyway, but yeah, so this is uh, 1990. These first came out in 1989. Um, they were planned to kill the Mustang, which I'm sure lots of people know. Um, it did not happen due to a bunch of basically hate mail that Ford received. I forget how many tens of thousands of letters that people wrote in saying you better not kill the four -wheel, or rear wheel drive uh, Mustang V8. Um, so yeah, they didn't and they just put this in the uh, sport coupe, kind of the import Japanese competitor. Um, and it did a pretty good job uh, comparing, I think. But yeah, I wanted to make this video before I put it away, do a walk around. I've never done one since I bought the car. I bought the car in uh, April or May of 2020. Um, it had 92,000 miles on it when I bought it. It has 102,300, I think, on it right now. Um, most of those miles were put on it over the course of those three years. Um, this year I've put over 2,000 miles on it alone from September till now, which is November 2nd, I believe. Uh, but I've done a lot of work to this car. Um, you probably can tell based on the appearance, if you know these cars at all. Um, this is a riding on uh, second gen Ford Probe chrome swirlies is what they call them. 16 inch wheels instead of the factory 15 inch. Um, I didn't really like the factory 15 inch wheels very much. Um, I think the 16s really fit the car well. Um, they're wrapped in uh, Firestone, Firehawk, Indy 500, uh, summer performance tires. Really like this tire, nice budget uh, performance tire. Lots of grip. Um, they do wear pretty quick, but I don't daily drive this, so not too worried about it. Uh, it is lowered on... K-Sport Control Pro coilovers. I believe it was about a two and a half inch drop. I went with, um, I didn't want it slammed. Just wanted a nice, uh, just nice minor wheel gap. There's a little bit. I guess some would consider it slammed. Eh. The front does have negative 2.6 degree camber. which I've found is too much for how this car drives, I think. So I'm gonna probably go down to negative 1.8 degrees. 
The rear is not adjustable in the camber department. But as you can see, absolutely zero rust on this car. Came from Evansville, Indiana, which is right at the Kentucky border. So a southern car for its whole life until I found it for sale in Portage, Michigan. Uh, the guy I bought it from brought it up uh, a couple months or yeah, a few months before uh, he listed it for sale and then I found it and bought it. Um, it was repainted at some point in its life. So they did a pretty good job. Um, and you can see some overspray in places they didn't mask super well, but um, it's way better than a lot of resprays I've seen. You can see some overspray in there and all that. Oh, there's some up here too where it started uh, chipping and stuff. But there's no orange peel. Um, clear coat was done pretty well. The car was in an accident at some point. It showed on the Carfax. I forget what year it was. 2006 or something, I think. Front end collision. And then apparently a rear end collision. The front end is somewhat noticeable if you get under the car. I mean, they did a pretty good job. I mean, as you can see, the bumper lines up pretty well. The fenders line up pretty well. I think all these panel gaps here are just that, you know, late 80s kind of lack of attention to detail. Go ahead and pop the hood here. Um, the interior is in pretty good shape for how old it is. It was built in it's a 1990, but it was built in uh, 89. Shows right here. Late uh, August of 89. Mileage 102, okay, 102, 206, not 300. Alright, the hood's open now. Yeah, as you can see, Pretty clean under here. This uh, manifold heat shield is looking pretty rough, but other than that, it's uh, pretty clean in, under here. And you can see the case sport coilover top mounts with the camber adjustment and then the adjustable uh, dampening front and rear for the dampening. Um, this came from the factory with uh, adjustable uh, shocks. Um, the connector is right here, and it would connect to the, the thing right here, the electrical control box, whatever. And there was actually rubber covers that hit it, um, and it was controlled by the switch um, down there in the center console. A sport, normal, and soft, more the modes. Um, my dad actually owned one of these cars, brand new, back in 89. Um, and that's why I love them so much. Uh, he still had it for some of my childhood. Um, his lasted to like 338,000 miles, I believe. Mazda, Mazda makes some pretty good engines. Uh, original clutch on this, or wait, no, actually this clutch was replaced. Um, shows on the Carfax. Uh, the engine is all original, never been rebuilt. Transmission's original. Um, my dad's clutch on his lasted the whole time. All 338,000 miles. Turbo lasted all the way to that point, too. Um, this, as far as I know, has the original turbo as well, which is hiding down there. Um, air conditioning was converted to R134A at some point. Compressor does run. It blows cool, not cold. Um, probably needs to be charged to the proper capacity, because I know when you switch from R12 to R134A, you got to adjust the charge amount so but I've done uh, all kinds of work new brake master cylinder new clutch master cylinder new clutch slave cylinder which is down on the transmission new fuel filter um, plugs and wires uh, silicone intake boot um, I think that's it for under here there's the intercooler It's only a 12 valve engine, but you wouldn't know it from driving it. Uh, it does 
even for today's standards, it does pretty well. It's, um, it's definitely not slow. Um, it's not fast, but it's not slow. Go ahead and close the hood here. I had to paint in the matte black in the bumper here. You can see the matte black in there and then down here at the bottom. The other parts are real and actually do go through, but these don't. Um, fog lights were part of the GT uh, in this location. Um, the GT got completely different front and rear bumpers as well as the side body kit, which makes um, a pretty good look, in my opinion. It's got the classic first gen Ford probe taillight leaking, lots of moisture in, and then they fog up and look terrible. Um, these have a lot of dirt in them, unfortunately, because someone drilled holes to, I don't know, let the water drain out or air flow in there better instead of, you know, sealing them up with some silicone around the edges and seams of the tail light. And I also painted the black, matte black, in the bottom of the rear bumper as well. It's got a different muffler than factory. Factory would have been two uh, dual tips. That kind of pointed down, looked way better. Uh, I have a full cat back stainless exhaust for this for next year, so I just painted that matte black in the meantime to hide the rusty bare metal. The glass of these is just, I love that hatchback with the glass that just wraps around. Especially when you tint it, it just looks even better. Very space, spacey, kind of out of this world looking. But yeah, see, I also did, painted the brake calipers black. Um, and then I did, probably can't see it, but it's got stainless steel braided brake lines at all four wheels. Um, it's got polyurethane sway bar end links, polyurethane sway bar bushings, front and rear. It's also got polyurethane upgraded round and polyurethane uh, trailing arms for the rear. I guess we'll go to the interior next. These door handles are even cool. They're flush with the with the body. The drag coefficient on this car was extremely low. Um, uh, very, very well, very good for the time. Power locks, power windows. Uh, I think it's a six way adjustable driver's seat. I gotta get the driver's seat restuffed um, on the back and possibly the bottom. Kind of feels a little thin in this area. It's got the crazy 90s automatic seat belts that retract and slide back automatically when you put the key in the ignition. Five speed manual. I believe it was Mazda's strongest uh, manual transmission at the time. No known really problems with these in terms of reliability with the transmissions or really the engines. Really like the gauge design, lots of information, oil pressure, uh, battery voltage, and uh, temperature, uh, I guess I should say alternator voltage. Um, your turbo boost gauge factory, it's 7.8 PSI of boost. Plan to turn that up in the future. Not too much, probably 12 PSI is my guess. Aftermarket Kenwood stereo I put in, along with four um, NVX coaxial speakers, six and a half uh, inch in the front. Um, and then I got 
rear speaker brackets out of an 89 probe because they actually held six inch speakers instead of this which held four by six oval speakers and oval speakers just do not sound nearly as good as round speakers and not to mention six inch speakers are bigger than four by sixes so we have power locks power windows all work um, cruise control works I fixed it uh, it was the clutch uh, switch the safety switch the rubber the rubber pad um, just wore out and rotted out of the pedal that pushes the switch in and disengages the cruise so every time I try to set the cruise it would just think that the cruise control needs to be disabled because the clutch is pressed uh, some interesting switches for the turn signals um, the wipers twist knob intermittent wipers adjustable on the end uh, rear wiper and sprayer washer sprayer rear defroster um, your your interior lighting uh, dimming switch um, fog lights and the pop-up headlights go ahead and take a quick look at them I did upgrade them to LED uh, H4 bulbs bought these glass housings off of Amazon oh, you can see the red paint from uh, they robbed parts off of a uh, red car when this was in an accident because um, I've noticed red paint underneath on some of the front bumper supports and all that I'll touch that up at some point with some metallic silver I believe this is a factory option color um, the pinstriping is not but I really like the dual black pinstripes I think they fit the car very well um, just the fender design that flows into the side mirrors just really is just really cool you just don't see hardly any cars that do that and you can actually leave these headlights up and with the headlights off so you can change the bulbs or just so you don't have to you know put them up and down all the time especially if you're driving at night I just usually leave them up when I stop and then just flip the switch back one to turn them back on the seat belts are illuminated you might be able to see the red glow in there kind of funny I guess I'll demonstrate the seat belts here. There's the key. Neutral. I guess we'll go ahead and start it up here. Automatic down driver window. signals, hazards, cruise control on and off switch. Uh, what's really neat is when you have the headlights on, these switches, all this wording lights up, even the turn signals, um, the headlights and all that, which there aren't many cars that do that. It's just another kind of neat feature about this vehicle, part of its charm, fog light switch. I already showed that. This is pretty crazy for the time, I think. Um, a trip computer, I believe is what they called it. I mean, you've got average fuel economy. Unfortunately, the old LCD up here, the crystals are starting to die in it, and uh, you can see it at the top there. It's, it's not doing so well. There we go, brighten it up a bit. Um, it's gotten worse over the course of me owning it, unfortunately. Got instant economy, nothing because I'm not driving. Distance till empty, 
exterior temperature, metric, um, and imperial. Average speed, um, distance, that's, uh, that's basically a secondary trip, uh, trip odometer. Then you also have destination where you can uh, actually input the amount of miles that you have to go and it will calculate uh, your estimated time of arrival. It'll basically do it ETA. It'll be how many hours or minutes it'll take to get there based on your, I'm guessing, wheel speed and your miles per hour. Um, I usually leave it on exterior temperature. Um, these are extremely fragile in these cars. Um, it's rare to find one of these cars that actually has this intact. I mean, you can see I cracked it on accident um, just by accidentally resting my hand here when I was working on the this thing, which is falling apart, unfortunately. Someone ruined this um, already before I bought the car. And trying to find this part is very hard. Uh, one day, I mean, I plan to buy a parts car to keep this one going. Pretty simple to use um, climate control. Um, it was electric. Um, in the base model GTs, this would have been manual without the, the little motors that control the air direction and the, the blend door. I mean, you, I can even hear the motors moving and stuff. So um, I really haven't heard reports of this breaking. So I hope hope that's true because uh, I'm sure those parts are extremely hard to find. Yeah, that's one thing about this car is parts are pretty hard to specialty interior parts because I don't think there's any Ford parts bin in this car. Um, like the switches and all that, they're all Ford Pro proprietary, uh, unfortunately. The power mirrors, uh, driver's side one works, passenger one does not. And here's the ride adjust for the factory. Back in the day, the adjustable uh, struts, um, sport, normal, soft. Um, the power steering on this car is actually variable based on the speed you're going. Um, they do tend to fail in the as they get old due to age. The capacitors in the control box under the driver's seat leak, and then you basically lose pretty much all power assist. Um, it it kind of assists, but it's very weak. Um, I had the problem on the old steering rack. I replaced the whole steering rack in this car. I think it was the um, the valve on the steering rack, on the old steering rack that failed because once I put the new rack in, it had a new valve already on it and it works perfectly um, since before it would have been pretty stiff to turn the wheel just sitting, but um, ever since replacing the rack, um, that box under the seat seems to still be working for now, anyway. Um, this steering wheel is actually out of an 89 probe because um, my dad's is an 89, so I wanted to get rid of the old the steering wheel, they changed it in 1990. It just didn't look, it said probe here and it, it wasn't three spoke. Um, it just didn't, it didn't remind me of my dad's. So I just remember seeing this steering wheel and him shifting a lot in his car. So um, unfortunately this is, um, should be leather wrapped, but I can't, I wasn't able to find a leather wrapped one. Uh, and the leather wrapped one I did find was terrible. I should have bought it anyway and had it recovered, but in the future, First gear, second, third, fourth, fifth, and reverse. Um, this has um, a short throw shifter um, from a Honda Accord or Civic, Honda Civic from the late 90s. Um, it, it's compatible with the original shifter in this, so it shortens up the throws a lot, a lot more notchy, just better feedback. Um, and it also has brass shifter bushings from uh, a guy on the Facebook group that for the Ford Probe, Scott, uh, I can't think of his last name, uh, Exile Auto Works. Great bushings, they're oil impregnated, so they, in a sense, lubricate by themselves. Ashtray and cigarette lighter. The ashtray is actually illuminated at night when you turn your headlights on. Storage pocket down here. Um, Lower motor. Uh, unfortunately, no cup holders in this car, and they didn't even put little circles that don't do anything, which is fine by me because they don't do anything. Um, got a lot of napkins in here. 
the 1990 Ford Probe owner's manual. Pretty cool, some other books for the time. Just a cool piece. Um, this, I actually had to buy this uh, off eBay because the one for the car was missing. Try to shove this back in there. Will it close? Of course not. There we go. It does have the huh, lap vents? I, I don't. I don't know. Um, they they aim toward your lap. Um, it's got one on the driver's side too. Um, and then the vents also go into the door. So when you open it, you can see the rubber seal and where it d connects to the dashboard ducting. And then you can actually shut them off too. Um, power locks. It's got a dual tone horn. Um, tachometer. Up here is pretty neat too. It's got a lot of, like, uh, basically reminders. If your fuel is low, light will come on. Coolant's low, washer fluid. Um, let you know if you have taillights, stop lights out, headlights, door jar. I just want to show you what that looks like. Oh, that the arrow is burned out. Um, but if I pop the trunk, there you go. Switched out the lights for LEDs too. The camera is making it look weird. Map lights. Actually, those really work super well. They're, um, they're focused or, and, uh, I forget what you call that, but they really light up your area down here. Um, yeah. This seat's in, like, perfect condition. The padding back here is super good compared to the driver's side. I, I mean, it's not uncomfortable, but it's just noticeable. I can feel it in my back after driving it for a long time. I'll show the trunk here. Rear wiper. Nice, huge hatchback. You can fit a lot of stuff in this. Um, especially if you take this out, the I don't know, luggage tray, whatever you want to call it. Not luggage, but uh, just the rear tray to hide stuff back here. Spare tire underneath there. Actually, I put one of the factory this, uh, the factory wheels in here for the spare instead of the donut. That's the factory design. It's missing the center cap because I'm not going to bother with that if I have a spare and need to change it out. Got to do some sanding and painting back here. I was removing all the factory uh, rubber, or not factory, but the aftermarket rubber rubberized undercoating that someone had done it lifted and water was trapping it and creating rust so but yeah lots of room back here seats fold down and you can fit a lot of stuff and then this can come down as well it's actually got nice trays so stuff won't fly around and go everywhere when you're driving That's pretty nice. Uh, third brake light access panel. And to do the rear bulbs, you gotta remove this whole thing. Replace the hatch struts too. Very quiet, just very quiet engine. And this muffler has a decent tone, actually, for, for whatever it is. It doesn't sound like a lawnmower. There's the automatic belt in action. Surprisingly pretty quick. Um, I believe those were replaced, the motors were replaced at some point. seat slides forward to get back into the back easier. I really like the red 
accents on these seats. It's pretty cool. Look to the interior. Lots of visibility, great visibility out of this car. Just pop on the back here. It's pretty tight fit for someone six feet or taller. My head hits the ceiling. Um, so kind of got a duck to the side, but that's fine. Armrest with a little bit of storage. It does fold up though. Rear light and an ashtray. Uh, lumbar support and uh, side bolstering adjustment on the driver's seat. Passenger seat only gets uh, lumbar. Uh, too bad there's not any uh, rear pockets. I like when cars have rear pockets. The door chimes even. Um, I don't think I've ever heard this door chime in any Ford before. It's not annoying. These are kind of starting to separate, unfortunately. But I don't know why the lights don't work. Don't really care too much about that. Headliner's in pretty good shape. Um, it's not falling down anywhere. It's just starting to get a little thin in areas due to age. It is starting to separate a little bit right there. The driver's mirror, I, visor, I don't know. It looks like a cat attacked that or something. I don't know what happened there. Um, and yeah, finding that part's pretty much impossible. This one's even worse for this fabric separating. Just kind of a, just kind of a poor design, I think, in my opinion. It should have been um, like the other Ford vehicles with the, the door that swings up and all that. It's kind of neat there. Another neat thing about this, it's got an uh, under seat storage tray. I think I've pretty much covered the interior. Release, emergency release if the power quits working. And there actually is manual access port right there. You can turn it with a wrench to get this to go all the way to the, the final position so you can still use the car if the power seat belts fail. I know the early, uh, the, the seat belts, the automatic seat belts were started in 1990. The 89s did not have automatic seat belts. Kind of 50-50 on that. I like them due to their, you know, the era of the car. It's, it's pretty, pretty neat, but the failure point and Trying to find the parts is not ideal. This is another change for 1990 was the front bumper and rear bumper and side uh, cladding, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I believe they changed the front lighting design, the turn signal lights and all that, due to problems with visibility on the 89s because the turn signal was only visible from like right about here, whereas this they made it visible from the front and side more so. I think the laws changed or something about that. The fog lights, well this fog light works, that one does not. Uh, it's a rusty, it's got a rusty um, reflector and that's kind of how it makes its connection for ground. Gotta find one of them at some point. But yeah, I think these chrome second gen wheels just really set the car off. We'll take just drive it really quick around the driveway here. Super easy clutch. I mean, there's just there's it's pretty light. Um, lots of reverse gear. One. Love that on a manual cars. Yeah. 
e-brake works it's a disc brake in the rear and it actually uh, does, uses a caliper to do it pretty neat usually it's the it's like an internal drum which are not the best power antenna replace that I can get it There. I mean these speakers are these speakers are pretty great for being it's running off the factory amp under the seat I don't know what the wattage output is to each speaker but I'm guessing it's got to be 30 to 40 watts because the factory head unit is or this Kenwood head unit is about I think 22 watts to each speaker and Running it off just the head unit was a noticeable decrease in sound and volume, so. Apparently there's not a good um, FM station. There we go. But yeah, eh, sound doesn't really translate well over video anyway, so. But I mainly use Bluetooth on it, I mean with my phone for my, you know, YouTube music and all that. Yeah, um, there's a microphone I put in. I gotta stick it up here for the Bluetooth phone calls and all that. And I'll show you under the hood with it running here. The old clickety clack. I, I believe it's the fuel injectors. Just pretty loud fuel injectors. But. Just the early, you know, early years of fuel injection. Yeah, just a all around, all around pretty cool car in my opinion. You can see the the negative camber now pretty well with the wheels straight. Just fun, sporty little coupe. Get about 28 miles to the gallon on the highway, going 80. Can't really complain about that. And with the Coilovers, it just handles like a little go kart. The oval fuel door is a pretty cool looking thing, and here's the uh, release and trunk release. Premium fuel recommended. I do put premium in it. Repl I replaced the uh, gas cap and it got all moldy and stained unfortunately but I'm glad when they repainted this that they retained the well they probably didn't even paint in here um, under the hood though the stickers were retained which is pretty cool The old R12 fuel shut off in the trunk. But yeah. Just one of these 80s, 90s vehicles that just is really cool. I get lots of compliments and looks a lot people can't believe one still exists because um they just i mean they, a lot of them died with rust and and people just <laughs> driving them hard and not maintaining them and all that stuff but yeah they're reliable if you take care of them uh i did 
all the ball joints, um, brake pads, brake fluid flush, um, pretty much all the wear and tear items. CV axles are new. Um, all the failure points of due to age. I mean, all the stuff I replaced was pretty well worn out. Both CV boot axle boots were ripped and slammed grease everywhere. Uh, I run Mobile One, full synthetic, high mileage, 530. Every I change it every three to four thousand miles with a Wix or a KNN um, perform or whatever they call it, premium oil filter. The it's got new uh, front motor mount and transmission mount. And I have that motor mount. Still gonna put it in at some point. But yeah, that's the car. Plan to make a video on the Saab at some point. I don't know when. Maybe spring, maybe before winter strikes. But we'll see at some point. Um, just, I don't know, not a priority, unfortunately. I'd like to do more videos, but just time, working full time and all that, you know. My days off are usually spent working on my cars or traveling and, you know, I love to travel and drive all around Michigan or out of state and just see new things. Um, took this up to Sault Ste. Marie, which is the um, upper peninsula of Michigan, right there before Canada because there's Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, and Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Uh, from my house, it's about, I think it's about four hour drive from my house to Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, Cross the Mackinac Bridge with it for the first time. Um, I'm assuming in its life. Um, it could have crossed it at some other point. I mean, Indiana's not super far, but you never know. Uh, I think I'm up to what is it? Six, six or seven thousand miles since I bought it. Three and a half, over three and a half years ago. For all of 2021, it mostly sat as I was working on it. It was on jack stands for five months or four months or so, uh, doing the brakes, doing the uh, brake hoses, the caliper, painting the calipers and pads and the trailing arms and sway bar bushings and just all that fun stuff coilovers just basically making it to where it's drivable and you know reliable in theory I mean it is 34 years old so any of the engine seals and the original alternator and power steering pump all that could fail at any point really but as of this moment they are working properly and no, no strange bearing noises or anything. Yeah, but that's the car. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. It's a bit long. Um, but, well, a lot, a lot of stuff to cover. A lot of stuff's changed. And, uh, well, never made a video of this car. A walk-around video, so. Yeah, thanks for watching.